Okay, this tutorial is going to go over Tune Boom Harmony and just kind of introduce the software to anyone who's new to it or who's kind of had a minute and needs a refresher on the basic interface here. So I'm going to divide this up into multiple tutorials, so not everything's going to get hit in this tutorial, but I'm just going to go over kind of the essentials here. So when you open up Tune Boom Harmony, which is uh, down here, and this window will come up. And if you've been working on an older scene, um, you can kind of sometimes older projects will show up right here, but that's empty right now. Um, what we need to do is set up a project directory first because Toon Boom Harmony, it references files. So for instance, if you're working on um, uh, with audio files or if you have background paintings that you made in Photoshop that you want to bring in, you want to bring it into the project directory so that um, Toon Boom can source those files and find them instead of having to search through your whole computer and find them elsewhere. Um, this allows you to kind of share your projects more seamlessly with other animators, but also makes it so that if a file just randomly gets moved around on your computer, you're not missing links, and also Toon Boom Harmony will crash a lot if you don't set this up correctly. So we're going to create a project directory, which will just be a folder with a folder structure in here. And um, you'll just want to be putting your files into that project directory as you work. So we have a new scene, and I'll just call this uh, Toon Boom 1. And the location, I'm going to put this on my desktop, but you can browse and you can find other places on your computer to put this onto. But again, it's already set to desktop, so I'm good there. Um, it's really important to work locally on your computer in Toon Boom. There's a little bit of a problem with Toon Boom where if you're working on an external hard drive, it has trouble working with that. Even if you're working on a really fast solid state drive, it's, there's something with the software that has problems with it. So just be sure to work somewhere, anywhere locally on your computer. Um, so that can be your desktop, anywhere, you know. So we have the location set there. I'm going to set this up to be 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. So that's HD, and that's a good standard format to work with. And when I'm ready, I will create a scene. And you can see right there, it created Toon Boom 1, which is the name of the project directory. So it just showed up there. Let me minimize this just for a moment here. And so it creates this project directory. So um, we'll kind of go over this down the road, but but um, we'll go over that in future tutorials. This is just going to be more of the basic interface to kind of get you uh, on the ground running here. So this is what the Toon Boom interface looks like right here. Let me quickly, I have some custom preferences set up here, and let me just very quickly turn those off so that this looks like the way, oh, whoops, the way it would look for anyone who's opening Toon Boom for the first time. Okay. So hopefully this kind of looks like what your screen will look like right here. So we have a few different windows right here. So we have our toolbar right here. We have our canvas. We have our timeline. We have our tool properties. And then we have our palette over here. So that's going to be what this tutorial goes over is just kind of introducing a lot of these concepts here. Um, when I'm opening up Toon Boom for the first time, I do like to change those two settings, which I just turned off right there. And so I'm going to go over first how just to turn those settings on, because I think it'll be good for everyone just to have those um, functional right now. So the first setting is you can see right now that the canvas is highlighted red. And then as I move my cursor around to other areas of the screen, it stays highlighted red right there. Um, and what I like, um, how to explain this, is um, Basically, if you go to Harmony Premium, down to Preferences, we'll get our Preferences window back up again. We have all these tabs right here and go under General. And then we turn on Focus on Mouse Enter right there. And I'll press OK to make sure that that setting saves. And now you can see that as I drag my cursor around, whatever area I'm on turns red. So that just means that whatever shortcut that I press applies to whatever window that I'm hovering my cursor over, which I think is really helpful here. Um, the other setting that I have is, so we have uh, in our timeline, we have one empty drawing layer right here. And within that drawing layer, there's two sub layers within it. So there's a layer, or sorry, a line art layer, and then a color layer right there. And you can absolutely work 
with just these two layers if that works for you. And we'll go over this more in future tutorials, but I tend to work, um, so I'll go up to Harmony Preferences with four layers. And the way you set up four layers is you go over to Advanced, and again, I'm under that same Preferences window, and I'll go to Advanced and then this top one right here that says Support Overlay and Underlay Arts, and I'll press OK to let that setting save into the project. And you can see this updated to have the line art layer, the color layer, but now it has an underlay, or sorry, uh, I, I forget what their word for this is, but the um, kind of the, the, the sketching layer, the under layer right there, and then an overlay layer right there. And so it just kind of gives you a little more freedom to kind of move around. Um, so I'll kind of do my sketches here, my liner here, my color here, and then my overlays right there. But again, that's kind of moving into more advanced territory that we're not going to jump into in this particular video. So. Those are the two settings that I kind of turn on before I kind of get going in Toon Boom. So to start things off, we just have our one drawing layer right here that's empty right now, and there's no keyframes right now on my timeline. And I'm gonna first go over some of these tools right here in the toolbar. The first one I wanna go over is the pencil tool right here. So I'll click on the pencil tool, and I'll just draw a squiggle right there. And you can see a keyframe was automatically generated right there. And um, this goes to another first thing that I do when I'm setting up a project right here, is we have two view modes right here on our canvas, is we have the OpenGL view mode, which is this button where my cursor is right now, and then we have the render view button, which is this button right here. And you, you kind of need to be able to use both of those views. And if I go over to the render view, um, Let's see, it won't let me click on it. There we go. Um, it looks like a, a black drawing drawn on black paper. You can't see it, right? So what I need to do is I have my drawing layer right here, and I need to just create a color art layer to go underneath it. So the way you create new layers over here in the, the timeline bar is you just press this plus button, and we have a bunch of different options. We'll go over all these down the road. But um, we have our color card. I'll create that, and then I'll just click on where it says color card and drag it below the drawing layer. And so in our OpenGL um, view mode, it looks like this. But now when we go to our render view mode, we got a white card that goes underneath our drawings. So you can kind of now see our drawings in both views. So I'll return to my drawing layer right here. And so this is the pencil right here. And this is kind of the main tool that I used to draw right here. Um, let me move this down. You can also as you can see here, if you hold your cursor, you can change the size of the windows just by clicking right there. Um, so we have our different pencils. And you can see some of these say RD1, RD2. And so these are custom pencils that I made here. Um, but we can kind of go over that in um, some future tutorials. Again, I just want to touch on the absolute basics right now. So we have, um, let's say we have pencil one and I draw in a scribble right there. We have these two main sliders right here. We have the maximum size. So right now it's set at five points. I can drag that up and it'll become a 40 point line right there. And then we also have center line smoothing. And what that refers to is um, Toon Boom Harmony can kind of help correct your drawings, which can be really helpful for drawing cartoon characters and things like that. So with center line smoothing down, I'm gonna to try to draw Align and you can see there's like some waviness in my drawing. Let's see if I can draw this a little more wavy. There we go. So when I draw kind of a circle, it kind of draws it the way that my pen did it here. And as I turn center line smoothing up, as I do a circle, it should correct it a little bit right there. So it just kind of smooths things out. And I stay pretty active with this slider because sometimes you'll be working on a circle and it'll kind of go a little too far and other times it won't kind of do enough. And so I kind of, I'll tend to kind of move this around a little bit while I'm drawing, but I'll kind of tend to keep it around there depending on what I'm doing. So um, as you see there, I just did a shortcut um, without showing you all. So um, I need to be better about that. So let's talk about navigating around your, your viewport here. So we have uh, the spacebar button and all these are contained within this icon down here. 
but um, I'm using a lot of the shortcuts for them. So we have um, the hand view, which is the space bar that lets you move your canvas around, pan around here. If you want to zoom in and out, again, you can click on this button and go to the zoom. Um, but you can press Z on your keyboard as in zebra and zoom in and it zooms wherever you're clicking right there. And if you press um, option on your keyboard, a minus sign should show up and you can zoom out. If you um, want to rotate your canvas, let's say I'm drawing and I want to change my angle so that I can draw something a little bit better. If you click down here, you can have rotate view. So again, it's right here, rotate view right there. And you can rotate your view as you draw. And so I try to use that one, keep that button open as much as I can, and then I'll hold space bar, press Z, and then click on this to rotate as I want to rotate right there. Because this one, um, uh, I'm not quite sure right now what the shortcut is for that. Um, they've kind of moved it around, unfortunately. Um, if, you, if you're zoomed way in on, a, on something and you want to get out to, the, to see your whole canvas again, if you press Shift and then M as in Mother, Shift and then M, it'll punch out to your main view right there. So that's kind of how you navigate your canvas right there. So we've gone over the pencil view and how to kind of navigate your canvas view and some of the basic controls on changing your pencil. You can switch to different pencils, selecting different pencils here. Um, and the way that you customize pencils here, I'll just go ahead and go into it here, is um, so you have a pencil right here and you want to customize it. You just press this button right here. This, one, this toolbar will come up and you can kind of get into the details of it and customize it. You can add textures onto it as well. So if you want it to have like a little bit of a felt property, let's see if I make it a little bit bigger, you can see it'll add felt or you can give it a charcoal quality right there. So you can add texture onto it using this tab or just go none and go with a clean digital line. And once you're done with this, you can either press this button to create a new, a brand new brush preset out of it. So that's what I did with RD1 right there, for instance, is you can kind of create and name your own brushes down here, or you can press this button right here and it'll update the current brush to kind of um, take on whatever settings that you gave it right here. So you have both of those options right there. So let me switch back to just a normal pencil right here. Okay, so let's talk about some more tools right here. So we have the brush, and the brush is a lot like the pencil tool. We have different options down here, but the main difference between the brush and the pencil tool um, will come up when we go over this button right here. So um, we'll return to the brush here in just a moment. So we have our selection tool, which is this button right here, um, and it works like a lasso. And one thing I really like about this is if you want to delete one of these lines, you know, if you're trying to do that in Photoshop and that you're all working on one layer, this would be really difficult. But with this tool right here, um, let's say I want to uh, delete this line, this kind of, oops, this kind of going like this. Um, what I need to do is just draw a circle and delete it right there. Or you can just draw a line. So let's say I want to remove this squiggle right here as I can just draw a line right there and it selects it right there. So all you need to do is just highlight a little area of the line you want to delete. And it allows you to kind of delete lines that are even kind of getting overlapped by other lines right there. Um, so the selection tool allows you to kind of delete lines, but it also allows you to, um, let's say that I want to reposition something. So I can select this line right here and you can see this box comes up around it. If I hover my cursor over the middle, I can reposition it. If I hover it on the corner right there, I can scale it. Um, if I hover it on the corner and I hold shift and scale it, it'll uniformly scale it. And if I want to rotate it, I just hover it over the edge just like that. And then, oh, whoops. Let's see if it'll let me, there we, there we go. I can rotate it right there. Um, so you can kind of reposition your objects as well down there and rescale them. So, um, let me, I'm just going to delete all these real quick. And now I'm just going to draw one squiggly line with a pencil and then one squiggly line with a paintbrush. So, um, this line right here is the pen, uh, I used using the pencil tool. And then this line right here, I used doing the paintbrush. So let's kind of go over the differences of those. So 
Um, the contour editor, for anyone who's familiar with Adobe Illustrator, it's really similar to the same white um, arrow in Illustrator. And if I select my pencil line right here and I zoom in on it, using the contour editor, I get these beziers where I can grab. And if I click in the middle of the bezier, I can move the line right like that. And then you have these two handles right here where you can kind of uh, change the curvature over it like this. And it, it's really easy once you get the hold of it, uh, the hang of it. But again, it takes some practice. But again, it's this button right here and you can um, select these different beziers just by circling the points and they'll show up as orange uh, squares right there along your line and you can reposition them here and you can change your, the shape of your line kind of fine tune it right there so the paintbrush you can do that as well but on the paintbrush the main difference with it is when I zoom in you can try to select both sides but you can see that there's two sides to the um, to the contour here so let me select this busy right here and I'll move it. And you can see that it kind of scales up that section right there. And I personally don't really like dealing with that. I would, it, within my workflow, I'd rather deal with a pencil and just be able to kind of use my contour editor to kind of change a line and change it real quick rather than having to kind of dive into this mess and deal with that. But it just, it really depends on your style because a lot of people really like the paintbrush. So it's, it's just really up to you on that. So that's um, so now I've gone over these four buttons right here, which are all really important buttons right there. I'll just select it all and delete it using the selection tool. You have the eraser tool, which um, works the way you would expect. It shows up as a gray line and you can kind of erase out sections like that. When you erase a line like this, so that was one pencil line that I drew and then I erased some lines into it, is now when I do the selection tool, it kind of divides it up into different sections that I can kind of divide and conquer like that. Um, we have the text tool, um, the paint bucket tool. So the text tool, you can just type in text up here. Um, the um, paint bucket tool, which we'll kind of go over some more when we're kind of diving into this stuff um, with the layers. And moving down, we already went over the, magnif the zoom tool, which has the hand tool and the rotate tool view right there. Okay, continuing to move through here, we have our drawing layer. And so I'm gonna, the timeline's empty. I'm gonna draw a circle right here using my pencil tool. And so we have one keyframe right there. In order to extend it, I need to um, press um, F5 on my keyboard, which is the same as Adobe Animate. And so I pressed F5, I dragged my cursor to frame five and pressed F5 to extend the frame out. So it's now five frames long. You can also delete frames just by selecting frames like that and pressing delete. So now it's three frames. And right now you can see right here, this shows what frame you're currently on. Um, this shows the start frame. This shows the end frame. This animation set at 60 frames, which is a little long for this demo. I'm just gonna do 10 frames. And you can see I changed that number to 10 and the duration got set right there to 10 frames. And so let's add some more keyframes. So when I drag to here, it's now empty again because there's no keyframe there. So I'm gonna add an empty frame by clicking on this button right here. And you can see, I can't see my last drawing. And when you're animating, it's really helpful to be able to see your last drawing. So in order to do that, I need to click on this onion skin button. And um, you can see nothing showed up for me right now. So if that happens to you, that's because I am in my render view and I need to switch back to my OpenGL view mode. And so now the onions, the, the drawing from keyframe one, which is right there, I'm gonna move back to my second keyframe. And if I turn the onion skin on, it shows up as red. So now when I draw, I can use that as reference. So let's say I'm animating the, this ball going from left to right, right there. And so I'll turn onion skin off so we have keyframe one, keyframe two, right there. And if I wanna extend keyframe two to maybe frame six right here, I'll just um, move my cursor to there and press F5 again. And that, again, that extends whatever keyframe you have um, going on right there. So let me add another keyframe or empty frame right here. I'll turn on onion skin. 
And you can see right here, the range of the onion skin shows up with a green and red handle right there. So if I want to see more into the past with my onion skin, I can just drag that red handle right there. And so now I'm on my third keyframe and I can see I just draw it right there and I'll turn onion skin off and I'll extend this out to the end right here and press F5. And I can move these keyframes just by selecting it and holding shift. Make sure it selects correctly right there. And I can drag it out so I can make it so that this keyframe comes all the way out to there. And um, you can delete them. You can kind of move these around um, in ways that are pretty intuitive right here. So I'm scrubbing my cursor right now. If I want this to play, I can just press this button right here. But I also want this to loop because this is a really short animation. So in order to make it loop, I'll press this button right here. And now we have our animation looping right there. These buttons right here is if I had an audio file imported into here, which I'll go over in a future tutorial, is um, you turn this button on and then um, you'll be able to hear the sound as you play it back. And then this button right here is for scrubbing. And so that makes it if I'm scrubbing my cursor like this, I can kind of hear the audio scrubbing through right there. Um, and last thing I want to go over in this um, early demonstration is the palette, which is over here. So right now when I'm drawing, let me switch to my paintbrush. Nah, I'll just I'll stick with pencil and make it a wide pencil right here is where I'm black right here. If um, we have our palette over here, so you have like these default colors right here, right? So you can switch your colors right there. But you can also create your own palettes right here by, um, I'm gonna hover my cursor over this. So we can add a color right here. So if I press that, you can see I added a new color. And if I double click right there, we get this bar. And you can kind of change this view mode Let's say if you're comfortable with like Photoshop, for instance, if you click where this H is, you get something that's a little closer to what you might be used to in um, Photoshop right here, where you can choose another color. And then once you got it, you don't even need to save it or anything. You can just X out of it and you can see you have your new color right there. You can double click right there and you can rename it right there. So I named it new right there. You can also um, create new palettes. So if you um, press this plus button right here, can create a new palette and so I'll call this character one and then press OK and you can see right here we have the tune boom, boom, the tune boom default palette right here which I clicked and that's like what we start off with and then I can start creating one for like character A B C D you know etc and set it right here and setting a palette is really important in um, tune boom and I'll, I'll show why um, in a future tutorial when we get, kind of dive into this in more detail here, but we have a default color. We can um, double click on the color right here and make a pastel red, call this mouth, you know, something like that, and start creating a palette that um, works for your character here. And be sure to name them as you're going because that'll just make your life a lot easier as you're going here. And one thing that's really nice about these is um, when you're working on a character and let's say that you filled in the whole character and you're done with the animation and you filled it all in using these colors here and you're like, man, you know what? The skin color is a little wrong. If you just update the skin color here, it'll, let's say to green, it'll update for your whole animation wherever this color was used. So that's why using a palette is really important is it can save you a momentous amount of time um, on the back end at, while you're working on animations here. So that's kind of the overview of the interface here. And we'll dive into all of these in kind of smaller modules here to kind of give more details on each little section.